Already grocery store shelves are emptying out. Some BC dairy farmers are being asked to dump their milk because it can't be transported. And there are fears that fuel shortages are imminent. Omar Algabra is the Federal Minister of Transport. He is in Mississauga. Uh, Minister Algabra, thank you very much for speaking with us. Uh, we're starting to see panic buying in British Columbia, particularly at grocery stores. What is being done to move food and supplies into the province to ensure people can get what they need to survive? Katie, uh, thank you for having me on your show again. Um, um, it's good to see you. Let me just say first that uh, my heart and our government's uh, commitment to the people of British Columbia is rock solid. Um, uh, we recognize the challenges uh, that many residents in British Columbia are facing today. Um, I spoke uh, yesterday with my provincial counterpart, Minister Fleming, and I'd want to take a second to thank him and his team for their hard work on this. We discussed uh, all options uh, to ensure uh, the uh, reopening of our supply chain as quickly as possible. Uh, earlier today, I met with stakeholders from the transportation sector, including CN, CP, uh, the Port of Vancouver, representatives of the trucking associations. Um, there are some good news. We're talking about hopefully some of the uh, 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 train rail corridors to be opened, reopened as soon as few days. Um, um, so that will be good news. You probably heard that uh, uh, VIA carried uh, individuals who are stuck from Hope to Vancouver uh, overnight. Uh, so there's a really good signs that we're reopening as quickly as possible. Some some of the highways are hopefully will be reopened and again in a couple of days. But we're looking at other options uh, to ensure that we maintain a, a supply chain that provides essential goods for Canadians. I was going to say, for people watching this right now, there is so much concern, um, whether it comes to fuel shortages, food shortages, and, and panic buying. Um, Big picture, long term, you know, how long do you think it's going to take before things get back to normal? Do you have a timeline in play there? Look, I really don't. Uh, but as I said, that the signs are promising that we're going to see reopening uh, some of the highways and uh, and the rail tracks as quickly with it as within a couple of days. Uh, but also... Uh, uh, we are looking at options. For example, we're uh, uh, ensuring that the province or the federal government will, is going to use our, the authorities that we have to regulate the flow of goods and people on these uh, routes to prioritize essential goods uh, to ensure that essential supplies uh, uh, are prioritized. Also, we're talking to our friends in the U.S. about opening up uh, a separate route for truck drivers to go down south and then come back up uh, to BC uh, where, uh, while suspending some of the traditional uh, uh, custom regulation at the U.S. border to expedite this. So we're looking at options. We're looking at using utilizing barges uh, to bring supplies as well. So we are looking at all options because it is a priority for us to ensure that Canadians have the essential supplies that they need. I know that this is being described as a once in a century storm um, and there's going to be a lot of time to look at what the lessons learned are here. But I'm curious as to what this what happened in British Columbia, what does it say about Canada's infrastructure and are Canadian communities ready for extreme weather? We know more extreme weather is coming. Are Canadian communities prepared to deal with that? Katie, earlier today, uh, uh, the acting uh, chief of defense staff said that, the, and the minister of defense said, told Canadians that during the pandemic, the military was called upon 12 times uh, to help with natural disasters. This is unprecedented. Uh, it's clear that um, uh, there, we're expecting more and more of these uh, weather, uh, extreme weather incidents. So uh, uh, you're right, we need to do more to prepare. We need to do more to mitigate um, uh, such impacts. And we also need to do more uh, uh, to combat climate change. So uh, this is a reality. This is not something that is happening in the, uh, in the future decades from now. People of Canada are experiencing it today, and we need to do everything we can to mitigate it and also curtail it. Uh, we've had a number of conversations on our program in the weeks uh, and in the weeks leading up to COP26, during COP26, and we will continue to have those conversations. Uh, not in terms of climate change, but I'm very curious 
as to whether your government will consider any sort of big spending packages when it comes to reassuring or reaffirming, reaffirming the, the infrastructure of small communities so that when these storms do hit, these extreme weather events, that they're better prepared to deal with this. Is that something your government is looking at? And what would something like that look like? So, Katie, I can assure you that in our uh, previous budgets, um, much of our infrastructure investment that has been dedicated, and it's the largest in Canada's history, has within it provisions for climate change adaptation. Um, uh, and uh, to be more specific uh, on the issue now of British Columbia, as well as the prime minister has committed to British Columbians, to the premier of British Columbia. I've had conversations with my provincial counterpart, Minister Fleming, that the government of Canada will be there to assist the people of British Columbia, to assist municipalities and communities uh, in order to build back in a more resilient way and, and certainly to build into account all these uh, extreme weather incidents that we are seeing more of these days. Um, I want to talk about something we are expecting uh, to be announced soon, and that is a change in PCR testing for people coming across the border. What we have reported at CBC News is that um, Canada is going to be dropping the testing requirement for fully vaccinated Canadians returning to the country from the United States as long as they've been in the United States 72 hours or less. Uh, are there any other provisions that will be included in that announcement, or is it just strictly that measure? Uh, Katie, as you know and your viewers know that our government has committed to Canadians from day one that we'll do whatever it takes to protect the health and safety of Canadians. And that included a variety of measures that we placed at the border. Uh, but what we also said to Canadians is that we're constantly re-evaluating and assessing the advice that we receive from public health experts. And we're constantly doing that and we're constantly evolving our, our posture at the border. So I'm not going to preempt our announcement. Um, uh, stay tuned to, to hear more of, uh, of uh, what the next steps will look like. But I can assure you that we, whatever we do, it will always be guided by science and, and public health experts' advice. We had heard from one of the lawmakers, the American lawmakers that we've interviewed on our program, that the prime minister told lawmakers on Capitol Hill yesterday it's going to be a three-phase approach. First Canadians, then Americans, then people from the rest of the world. That accurate? Uh, Katie, I, I, I'm not going to uh, preempt any announcements uh, that may or may not happen, but I just want to tell you that we have demonstrated to Canadians that we're always prudent and that we are doing things carefully and deliberately, but it's all guided by the advice that we receive and the data that we collect. All right. Thank you very much, Minister Algabra. Thank you for your time today. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News channel or click the link for another video.